In this video, we're going to build an API using Django Ninja. Now, Django Ninja is an API package for Django, and its style of programming, its style of modeling, is more similar to FastAPI and Lightstar than it is to the Django REST framework conventions. So Django Ninja has deep integration with Pydantic and with Python typing, and it offers an alternative way to create APIs with Django. So in this video, we're going to build an API that allows users to fetch and create IoT devices, and also to assign a device to or from a location. And in the next video, we're going to create an application around that Django Ninja API, and we're going to use React and Next.js in order to do that. So let's dive in and get started. Now let's start with a look at the Django Ninja documentation. Django Ninja is a web framework for building APIs with Django and with Python type hints. And Django Ninja offers a developer experience that's similar to FastAPI, but it works within the context of a Django application. And the Ninja schemas that you use, these are subclasses of Pydantic's base models. So all of the good stuff that you get with Pydantic is available when you use Django Ninja in a Django application. Now we're going to build some endpoints and some models in this application for an imaginary IoT system that contains devices and also locations. Now I'm going to go and we're going to start by setting up a Django project in VS Code. So I'm going to open VS Code now. And at the bottom here, I'm going to use the python-m command, and we're going to use the venv module to create a virtual environment, which I'm going to call, let's just call this venv devices. Now you can see while that's creating, we now have a directory on the left-hand side called venv-devices. What we're going to do now is activate that virtual environment. Now there's different commands to activate depending on what operating system you're on. I'm going to put these on the screen now. If you're on Windows like I am, I'm going to go to that virtual environment directory. We're going to go to the scripts directory within that, and then we're going to run the activate script. That is going to activate our environment, as you can see here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to install some dependencies in this environment. Let's start by updating pip itself with the pip install-u pip command. And once that's completed, we're going to install three different packages that we're going to use in this application. So I'm going to paste a command in here. It's the pip install command. We're installing Django itself. We're also installing Django Ninja. And finally, Django extensions, which I always use in a Django project. So let's execute this in the virtual environment, and that's going to install those packages. And once we've installed those packages, I'm going to run the pip freeze command, and we're going to output the requirements that we have into a file called requirements.txt, and you can see that file here. Now we've installed Django Ninja here. As you can see below, we've also installed Pydantic and Pydantic Core, and that's because Django Ninja relies upon those packages. I'm going to go back to the terminal now, and we're going to start a Django application with the Django admin command, and we're going to run the start project subcommand, and let's give this a name of devices underscore backend. Once we execute that, we get the project directory on the left hand side. So we're going to work in that directory when we build a Django Ninja API. This directory is going to contain all of the Django files that we need to build that API. So on the terminal, what I'm going to do is go into our new Django application, where we can see we have the manage.py script and the actual project folder here. What we can do is create an application in this directory with the manage.py start app command, and we're going to give this application a name of devices. And that's going to create the devices folder that you see here, and that contains standard Django files such as models.py and views.py. Now what we're going to do now is open the models.py file and we're going to define the models that we need to create this API for IoT devices. So I'm going to minimize the terminal here and we're going to create these models now. So what I'm going to do is start with the location model. This is going to be a very simple model. So every device in the application has a location. That is optional if the device is not out on hire or if it's not been deployed to a location, that could also be null. But the location itself we're going to represent as a model, so that's going to inherit from Django's model class. And let's just give the location a name for simplicity, that's going to be a models.carfield. And we can add a max length of 200 characters. And I'm also going to add a dunder string method that will return the name of that location. In a real application, you could go beyond this and have latitude and longitude and more locational data. But for now, we're just going to give it a name. And an example name might be the office or a greenhouse or some other location where you might deploy some kind of IoT device. 
Now we also need a model for the device itself. So let's create another model here called device that's going to inherit from Django's models.model class. And we're going to give the device an ID and that's going to be an example of a models.uuid field. So a device ID is going to be a UUID and we're going to make that the primary key for this model by passing primary key equals true. And we can also pass a default in here. Now in order to do that, what I'm going to do is import at the top the Python UUID module. And we're going to reference a function on that module and that's the UUID4 function. So it's going to be UUID4 and we're also going to pass editable equals false into the model field. Now as well as the ID, I want to give a device a name. So let's pass another car field for the name. And in the URLs in our API, we want to actually have a slug. So what I'm going to do is create a field in the model called slug. And for the slug, we're going to use a field from Django extensions. Now I'm going to import this field at the top. It's called an auto slug field. And I'm going to go to the documentation for Django extensions and we're going to look for this. Now the auto slug field, it takes a populate from argument that specifies the field or the list of fields from which the slug will be populated from. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to VS Code and the slug field that we have on the model, we're going to set that equal to this auto slug field and we can pass populate from and we're going to set that to the name field on the model. So we don't need a list of fields here, it's just going to be a slug generated from the name of the device. So as an example of this, let's say we had a device called CO2 sensor, that's going to change that into a slug that's going to look something like that. And one last field here on our device, we want to add a location and that's going to be a models.foreign key to the location model that we created above. And we also need to set the on delete behavior on the parent model. So when a location is deleted, what we're going to do is we're going to set this field to null with the models.set null flag. And let me move these to new lines so that we can see this better. Now we also want to allow this to be null. So I'm going to pass null equals true and also blank equals true. And the reason we want to make this potentially blank is so we can add a new device in the Django admin without specifying a location on that form. We need to add blank equals true in order to do that. And let's also add a dunder string method that's going to return the device name and its UUID. So those are the two models that we need for this application. What we're going to do now is go to the Django settings.py file. And we're going to add this new devices app into the installed apps here. So let's add devices and we also need Django underscore extensions in here. Once we've got that, we can go back to our terminal at the bottom and we're going to run the python manage.py make migrations command. And that's going to create a local SQLite database. Once we've done that, we can then run the migrate command in order to add our new tables into that database. Now what I'm going to do now is add some devices and locations via the Django admin. In order to do that, we need to go to admin.py and at the top here, I'm going to bring the import of these two new models into the admin.py file. And then we can call admin.site.register and we're going to register the device model and also the location model here. That's going to give us access to these models in the admin, but we can only access the admin, of course, with a super user. So we're going to run the create super user command, and I'm going to call this user admin, and then we can actually run the Django server and access the admin with this admin user. So let's start the Django development server. Once that's started, I'm going to go to the browser and we can then add some devices and locations. Now I'm going to add the locations first of all. So you have a button at the top right here and you can add a location. And the location only has a name. So let's say we added a device to our office. We can save that and then add another one. And I'm going to add a couple more now. So I've added some locations. You can see them in this list view here. We have the garage, the greenhouse and the office. Let's go back to the home page here and we're going to go to the devices page. And what I'm going to do now is add some IoT devices into the database. Once I've done that, back on the list page, you can see that we have three devices. We have a CO2 sensor, we have a temperature sensor, and we have a proximity sensor. So now we have data in the database, we can actually now create the API around that data. And that's where we're going to bring Django Ninja into this project. So let's open up some documentation from Django Ninja. What we need to do is create something called a schema. And these schemas, they inherit from Pydantic models. But Django Ninja makes it very easy to create a schema from our Django model classes. We can do that by inheriting from a particular class called model schema. And as it says in the documentation, this is a special base class that can automatically generate schemas from your models. 
So before we create the API endpoints, we're going to start by creating a schema for our devices and for the locations. So let's go back to VS Code. And within this application here, the devices application, I'm going to create a new file and that's going to be called schema.py. Let's call it schemas.py actually. And at the top of that file from Django Ninja, what we're going to import here is the model schema object. And I'm also going to import the two model classes. And once we've done that, we can create some of these schema classes. So I'm going to start with the location schema. This is going to inherit from that Django Ninja model schema class. Within that, we define another class called Meta. And that's just like REST Framework Serializers or Django Forms. We define the Meta class and we can link this particular schema to a model. The model is going to be the location model and we can pass some fields to this. So we're going to need the ID of the location and we also need the name, which was the only explicit field that we defined on the location model. I'm also going to define a second schema and that's going to be called device schema. These are for the devices in the application. Again, inheriting from the model schema class and I'm going to define that inner meta class that's going to link this schema to the device model. And we want all of the fields in this model to be returned from the API. So I'm going to pass every single field into this tuple. Now, one thing I'm going to do explicitly on the device schema is we're going to amend the configuration for this location field. So I'm going to copy that and we're going to reference something here. So for the location, because this is a nested field, the device has a location, but that location itself is an actual foreign key here. It's an object. We're going to set the location equal to an instance of the location schema. But remember, the location could also be null. So we're going to create a union here with this operator. And we can say that optionally, if it's not a location schema, we expect it to be none. And we'll give that the default value as well. And I'm getting an error here. Expression cannot be an assignment target. And that's because for the typing, we need to separate that with a colon. So the default value is going to be none if it doesn't match a location schema. Now these schemas are used to determine the structure of the data coming into our API endpoints in Django Ninja and also the structure of the data that we're returning from those endpoints. So we need to create an API and I'm going to create another file here in the devices app and I'm going to call this one api.py and we're going to create our Django Ninja API within this file and then later on we're going to hook it up to some URLs in the Django application. So at the top here from Ninja let's import the Ninja API object. This object is similar to the fast API object. If you've used the fast API framework, what we do here is we create a variable called app and we can instantiate that Ninja API object. And then we can use this app to create some decorated handler functions in Python that are going to define our API routes. Now at the top, we're going to import two more things. We're going to import the device model class, and we're also going to import that device schema that we created in this schemas.py file. We're going to start with an endpoint that's going to allow us to fetch every single device that we have in the database and return that as JSON data. So let's go down here just below where we create the app object and we're going to create a decorator here and it's going to be api.get and this decorator will take a path and because we're fetching all devices let's pass the path of devices. And these decorators can also take a structure for the response. And because it's a list endpoint for these device objects, we expect this to return a list of the device schemas. So again, device schema, which we defined here, this determines the structure of the data that we're going to return from the device's endpoint. So we expect to return the ID, the name, the slug, and the location. And what we're doing here in API.py is we're telling this particular endpoint that we're about to create that it should return JSON data with that shape. And that's determined by the response that we pass into the decorator. So this is the decorator. We now need to create the function for this API endpoint. So I'm going to call the function get devices. And in the standard Django convention, that takes the request as the first parameter. And what we need to do is we need to fetch all of the devices from the database. So I'm going to return device.objects.all. Now this is a query set in Django. This is going to return the data from the database and it's going to convert every single row into a Django model class. But what we're doing here is because we have this device schema, this query set can then be converted into JSON data and that is happening under the hood 
using the schema in Django Ninja, and that's well integrated with Pydantic. We can simply return the query set here, and it's going to convert that into JSON data because we're using this schema. So the schema provides validation of the structure of that data, and it also provides documentation for the endpoint. We're going to see that a little bit later in the video. Now let's imagine that we wanted to create the same endpoint to get all of the locations in the database. What I'm going to do is copy this, and I'm going to paste it down below here. And the path that we're going to pass in here is locations. And we need to import the location model and also the location schema from the schemas.py file. Now I'm going to copy location schema and we're going to pass that in here as the response. What we expect to return is a list of these location schemas. And if you look at schemas.py, you can see that location schema here, we expect to have an ID and a name for the returned data. What we also want to do is we want to change the query that we're sending to the database. We're going to fetch all of the locations with location.objects.all. So here we have two endpoints that we're going to use to get started. One to fetch every device, one to fetch every location. We now need to tell Django about these URLs. So what we're going to do is go to the urls.py file, and that's within the project directory, which is called devices backend. urls.py, I'm going to remove this comment at the top, and we're going to add some URLs into this file. So at the top from the devices application, we're going to import from the API module that app object that we instantiated. And we're going to add a new path into the Django URL patterns. And we're going to give a prefix to this path of API. And then the second parameter here, we're going to take the app object from Django Ninja. And that has a field called URLs that we're going to reference here. And that's going to add all of the URLs from the app object into our Django URL patterns. And if we look at API.py, uh, I've actually made a mistake here. I'm going to change this object. It's not API, it's app. So sorry about that. I'm going to change that to app.get. But when we use the Django Ninja object and we create these endpoints with the decorators, it's going to register the routes that we use here and it's going to add them into this app object. And the URL's property that we're referencing here in URL patterns, this is going to contain those URLs from those endpoints that we've defined. So we're referencing them here and adding them into the Django project. And we can actually test this out now. So what I'm going to do is go to the browser and I'm going to navigate to localhost 8000 and we're going to go to the endpoint to get all devices. So I'm on that endpoint now, slash API slash devices, and you can see we're getting back the JSON data for all of the devices that I added in the Django admin. And you can also see the nested data for the location. So the CO2 sensor, that has a location that's set to the office. Whereas if we go down here, we have the temperature sensor, which has been added to the greenhouse. And each device has a UUID, and it also has that slug based on the name of the device itself. So that's the endpoint to fetch all of the devices. We can also go to the endpoint to get all of the locations and we get back the locations that we have in the database. So this is all working fine at the moment. We've created two endpoints and we've done that with Django Ninja. If we go to api.py, two very simple functions that return a query set, but also have references to these schema objects that we've created from our models. Now, one other benefit to using these schemas, which subclass Pydantic, is we can also get some automatic documentation. So I'm going to go to another endpoint here, and that's the API slash docs endpoint. And we get back this Swagger documentation for the endpoints that we've created through that Ninja API object. So we have this endpoint for getting all devices. And if we scroll down here, we can see a sample response schema. Because we've added that schema, and pass the response into the api.get decorator. The documentation knows the fields that we expect to have in the response when we call this endpoint. And you can see that it's a list containing that object with all of the keys that we expect to get in the response. So by adding the schema, we get this kind of nice automatic documentation of our endpoints that you can then share with your clients or with front-end developers that are integrating with the API. Let's now move on, and as well as an endpoint to get all devices, we also want to create an endpoint that's going to allow us to fetch an individual device by its ID. Now we need to use a Django Ninja path parameter for this. So let's see how to do that now in VS Code. Just underneath the devices endpoint, what I'm going to do is create another endpoint using the app.get decorator. And the route this time is going to be slash devices. And this time we're going to pass a path parameter and that's going to be the slug for that device and we can add the slash at the end here. And this time the response, because it's a single object we expect to get back, the response is gonna be just a single instance of that device schema. So the difference between this and the one above is that we're not returning a list of these objects. This is an endpoint to return a single device. 
so we don't need that list there. So what we're going to do now is write the function. So let's call this function get device. It's going to take the request as before, but this time because we have a path parameter, it's also going to take that slug, which is going to be a string. So the slug is passed into the function as a parameter, and the value of that is going to be based on what's in the URL in this path parameter. So it's the curly brace syntax here to define these dynamic path parameters. Let's now write the logic for this function. We're going to fetch a device from the database. And to do that, I'm going to import a function at the top here. So at the top, I'm going to import from Django.shortcuts the get object or 404 function. We can then use that function in our detail endpoint here. So let's call get object or 404. The model that we're going to fetch here is the device model. And that's the first parameter to this function. And the second is the lookup. So we want to look up a device by the slug that is passed into the URL. So we can pass that in here. And that's the lookup. And then we just need to return that device when it's found. And if it's not found, this is going to return a 404 not found. So let's save this now and test this out in our application. Let's go to the browser and we're going to go to the endpoint for these devices again. And you can see that each one of these devices has a slug that's been added based on the name of the device. So let's copy one of these slugs and we're going to go back to the URL and add that into the URL. And when we execute that request, you can see the response is for that individual item. So this device that is represented by the slug that we passed into the URL, that's what's returned. And that's because of our get object or 404 lookup that will look up the device by the slug. It will return a single object and that object is what we return. And because we are using this device schema, Django Ninja knows how to turn that model instance into the JSON data that you see on the page here. So everything is going well so far. What we're going to do now is we're going to create a new endpoint that's going to allow us to add a new device into the database. Now, in order to add a new device, we're going to need to send a request body to our Django Ninja API endpoint. So I'm going to reference some documentation on the request body in Django Ninja. At the top, as you can see, request bodies are typically used with create and update operations. For example, when you create a new resource, in our case, a new device, we're typically going to use a post request or a put request, and the request body is going to contain the data needed to create that resource. Now to declare a request body, we will need another Django Ninja schema. So what I'm going to do is go back to our schemas.py file in this application, and we're going to create a new schema here. And this new schema is specifically for creating a new device. Now when we create a new device, we need to specify the device name, and we can optionally give it a location as well. But what we don't need to do is give it an ID because that's generated in our Python code. If we go back to models.py, you can see we have a default here that's a UUID4 function that's going to generate that automatically. So we don't need in our schema to add the ID. And we also don't need the slug because that's automatically generated from the name of the device. So we're going to create this new schema now. What we need to do at the top, as well as model schema, we're going to import the schema class from Django Ninja. And then just below the device schema, I'm going to create a new class that we're going to call device create. And let's just call this device create schema for consistency. And this one is going to inherit from the schema class. Now, because it inherits from the schema class, we don't have a model schema, so we don't need this meta class. We can actually just define the fields that we expect here on our schema model. So a device will need a name and that's going to be a string and it also needs a location ID. So what we're going to do here in order to tie a device to a location, we're going to pass the primary key of that location in the request body. So that's going to be either an integer or if we don't have a location for our new device, that's going to be set to none and we can give a default value of none. So if we don't have a location ID in the request body, it's going to default to none. Now you'll notice how similar this is to Pydantic. We define the field in our model or our schema class and each field has a data type and optionally we can do things like provide default values to those fields. So that's the device create schema. I'm going to copy the name of that and we're going to go to api.py. At the top, let's import that from our file. And what we're going to do now is define another Django Ninja API endpoint. So I'm going to do this just at the bottom here. And this one is going to be a post request. So we're going to use the app.post decorator. And again, the endpoint is going to be the slash devices endpoint. So we're going to send a post request to the devices endpoint that's going to allow us to create that new device in the database. Now, when we create the new device, we expect to get a response that's equal to this device schema. So it's going to create a new device and it's going to return that device schema to us. 
And now we can write the function that I'm going to call create device here. It's going to take the request as a parameter, and it's also going to take a device, and that's going to be equal to our device create schema. And this is basically a schema for the request body. Let's go back to the Ninja documentation again. If we go down to this section on creating our data model, the model for the request body is just a schema class. We've already created that. If we go down further, we can see that we can declare this as a parameter to our API handler function. So for this particular endpoint, you just pass an item into the function and we give it the type hint that's equal to the schema for that request body. And what Django Ninja will do is it will read the body of the request as JSON data. It will perform any type conversions and it will validate that data. And then if all validations are successful, it's gonna give you the received data in the parameter. In this case, it's called item. And our function is gonna be called device. So that device is going to be equal to an instance of this device create schema class. What we can do is we can get that device data as a dictionary by calling device.modeldump. So let's call that now. Now model dump is a function defined in Pydantic and you can use model dump in order to convert your Pydantic model to a Python dictionary. And the reason that we're doing that is so we can call device.objects.create and this is a function in the Django ORM on the device model. The create model is going to create a new row in the database and it's going to take the data from our request body in this case and we're going to unpack that into the create function. So it's going to take the keys and values from that dictionary and pass them into the create function. That's going to give us back, let's call this variable a device model and then we can just return that from our function. So return the device model. So let's just quickly go over this. We have a post endpoint that's going to allow us to create a new device. Our client is going to send a request body that contains the data for the new device. We're going to take that data from the body that's been converted to the schema class. We're going to dump that to a Python dictionary and then pass the keys and values into the create method in order to add a new device. Once we add that device, we just return that and that's going to have populated fields for the ID and for the slug that we didn't pass in the request body. And that will return a device schema to our client with the newly created data. Now to test this out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file here and I'm going to call this requests.http. And we're going to define the request contents in this file. Now, in order to do this, we're using an extension in VS Code and it's an extension that's called REST Client. So it's this extension here and you can download that. I find it very useful for testing APIs. You can do all of the testing in VS Code without leaving the context of your editor. All you need to do is create a file with the .http extension and then we can add our requests here. So I'm going to add a post request in order to test this. And the endpoint that we're sending this to is localhost 8000 slash API slash devices. I'm also going to add a content type of application slash JSON. And then just underneath that, we can define the data that we want to send. And this is the JSON data. We're going to add the data for a device and we're going to give the device a name. And let's just call this new sensor. Now, before I test this out, I can see at the bottom here, I'm getting an error that the Ninja API does not have an attribute POS. So let's go back to API.py and I'm going to change this. This should obviously be post. So another mistake there. Sorry about that. Once we save that, we can go back to our HTTP file and we're going to try sending this request. Now above the HTTP definition, you should have this send request button that you can click. This is added by that REST client extension. So let's try this out. And you can see on the right hand side, we're getting back some response data. Now the location is null, but we do have an ID that's been populated from that UUID4 function. And we also have the slug that's been generated here. So we now have a new location. And if we go back to our browser and go back to the API, I'm going to go back to the endpoint to get all of the devices. And you can see at the bottom, our new device has been added into the database. And if we look at the slash locations endpoint here to get all of the locations, we have IDs of one, two, and three. Now remember in our schemas.py file, if I go back to that just now, you can see the location ID is potentially null. And when we created this request, we did not add a location here. So that was set to null. What I'm going to do now is add a location ID into this request. And let's set that equal to the ID one. If we now hit send request, you can see we get back a response. And this time the newly created sensor has a location and it's the location with the ID of one as we specified in the body of this request. 
and the name of that one is just Office. Now something interesting to note, because we've added a new sensor here and it's got the same name as a previous sensor, the generated slug for this device contains a number appended to the end of that slug. So that logic is automatically handled by this auto slug field in Django extensions. Now something else to note, if we go back to the HTTP file and we add a location ID of seven, that does not exist in the database. So when we send this request, we're going to get back an exception. If we scroll to the bottom of that exception, you can see it's an integrity error and a foreign key constraint has failed here. And that's because we're trying to add a new device with a location ID of seven, but that location does not exist in the database. So we cannot add that foreign key reference. What we can do is add a quick validation check to prevent this from happening. And if we add a location ID that does not exist, we want to return a 404 not found in that case. Now I'm going to go back to schemas.py here, and I'm gonna add a very simple schema here called error, and that's going to inherit from the schema class. And this class is just gonna contain a single field, and that's gonna be an error message, and that's gonna be a data type of string. So let's now save this, and I'm gonna copy the name of our new schema, and back to api.py, I'm gonna import that at the top from the schemas.py file. And this time in the api.post endpoint, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna amend this response here. So what we can do is we can actually pass a dictionary to response in this decorator. And the dictionary contains the status code as a key. So in the event that we have a 200 status code, we want to return the device schema in that case. But we also have now the potential, let's say for a 404 not found. So we can add a key of 404. And in that case, we're gonna return an error. So this dictionary tells Django Ninja that if we have a 200 response, we expect the device schema. But if we have a 404 response, we expect the error. Now the code that we're gonna add here is just at the top of this function. Before we create the model or before we try and create the device, what we're gonna do is we're gonna perform a lookup to see if a location ID has been passed in the body. So let's do that just now. We're gonna take the device, which is an instance of this device schema, and that has that location ID field. We're gonna check if that's not null with this if statement. So if we get here, we have a location ID in the body. What we're gonna do is we're gonna look in the database and we're gonna check if that exists in the database. So let's create another variable here, which we're gonna call location exists. And that's gonna be equal to a statement in the Django ORM. So it's gonna be location.objects.filter. We're gonna look at the ID field for the location and we're gonna try and find one that is equal to the location ID that's been passed in the request body. So that's gonna return the query set of objects that match this condition. So hopefully that will return a single location with that ID. If it doesn't, it's gonna return no objects. We can call the dot exists function and that's gonna return true or false based on whether or not there are any objects in this query set. Now what we can do here is we can check if not location exists, in other words, if there are no locations in the database that have this ID. We're then going to return the 404 status code and we can pass directly the dictionary of data into this. So it's gonna contain a message and let's just give it the message location not found. So let's just evaluate the logic in this function before we test this out. When we take the body of the request that's been sent from our client, we're going to check if that body contains a location ID. If it does, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look up the location database table. We're gonna try and find a location that has that ID. And by calling the exists function, we're going to get back true if we do have an ID or false if we don't have an ID for that location. And if it's false, what we're gonna do in this if statement is simply return a 404 not found along with this message. Otherwise, we're just going to continue with the function as it was before. So now let's go back to requests.http. We're going to try again to add a device with this location ID that does not exist. This time, when we send a request, we get back the message with location not found. So instead of the application returning an exception, we now have a simple message and the 404 not found status code that tells our clients quite clearly that we don't have a location that we're trying to add here. Now I want to add one final thing in this video, so I'm gonna close this off and go back to schemas.py. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a mechanism that allows our client to change the location of a device. So let's say we have a CO2 sensor that's in the greenhouse. We might want to move that to the garage so we need an endpoint that's gonna allow us to move a device from one location to another. So I'm gonna create a schema here that's gonna allow us to do that. 
and I'm going to call this, I'm just going to copy this over here, it's going to be called Device Location Patch. This is going to inherit from the schema class and what we're going to do is we're going to add a location ID into this and the ID can be an integer for the new location or perhaps we are taking a device and we're not going to deploy it to a new, a new location. So we can also set this to none as well. And again, let's just give it a default of none. So let's copy this and again back to api.py, I'm going to import this at the top. And you can see the imports are getting a bit unwieldy here. So what I'm going to do is actually stop the server and I'm going to run pip install black. And that is going to install a code formatter called black. We can then run this against our devices application and it's the api.py file. If we run black against that, you can see it's reformatted the imports. That's just a small detour here. Let's go back to adding our new endpoint. We're going to do this at the bottom of the file. So this is going to be done in a post request. So it's going to be app.post. And we're going to give this an endpoint here. So it's going to be devices slash, and then I'm going to use a dynamic path parameter for the slug for the particular device that we're going to update its location. And as well as the slug, let's add set location into the path. Now when we change the location for a device, we want the response to contain the device schema. So all of the details for that device in that schema. And then let's write the function. And I'm going to call this function update device location. And that's going to take the request as a parameter. And it's also going to take the device slug that's been passed into the URL here. And it's that slug we're going to do the lookup on. And as well as that, we're going to pass a body to this endpoint. It's a post request. So we're going to pass a request body containing our location ID for the new location. Now that is going to be a parameter that I'm going to call location. And that's going to be a, an instance of our new schema that we just created called device location patch. So that's the signature of this function. Let's try and fetch the device using get object or 404. So we're going to try and fetch a device based on the device slug that's been passed in. So we're going to set the slug parameter here to that path parameter from the URL. So this is going to give us back a device that we want to update the location of. What we can then do is we can take the request body, which is represented by this location parameter. And remember that can have an ID that's equal to null. So we're going to check if the location that's been passed in the body has that ID. And if it does have that ID, what we're going to do is we're going to try and fetch that location from the database again using get object or 404. So the object this time is the location object. And the lookup to get that location is going to be on the ID field. We're going to check if the ID is equal to the location ID that's been passed in the request body. Now just to go back to the schemas for a second, this is the schema that we're expecting in this endpoint and it contains a field called location ID. And it's that field that we're looking up from the request body here. So we're taking that location that's equal to that schema. We're checking if it has an ID and then if it does have an ID, we're getting that location from the database and passing that lookup here. Now in the case that we get back a valid location here, we can take the device that we fetched from the database and we can set its location equal to the new location. Now what happens if we don't have a location ID in the request body? We can go to this else block and all we need to do is set the device.location to none. So effectively if we send a post request to this endpoint without a location ID, we are nullifying the location for that device and setting it to null in the database. So either the if block is going to set the location to a new location or it's going to nullify it if we get to the else block. Let's now call device.save in order to save that change to the database and then we can return the device and that is what's expected in this API. Django Ninja is expecting that because we've set the response to the device schema so we can return an instance of the device model. Now let's test this out again using our requests.http file. I'm actually going to copy this here and I'm going to paste it down below and what we're going to do is separate these with three of these hash symbols. And I'm going to change the endpoint that we're referencing here. So we're going to use slash devices. And then we need a slug here. So it's going to be CO2-sensor. And then the set-location endpoint. So this endpoint should match what we have in API.py. We have this path being passed into the decorator. We're going to send a post request to this endpoint. And all we need to do is specify a location ID. So I'm going to set that to 2 and save this. And then we're going to try sending this request. And I'm getting an error because we don't actually have the Django server running. So let's start the server and we can now send this request and we get back a response. And you can see that for this device, we have a new location that's been set to the location with the ID of two 
and that has the name of greenhouse. And we can change this again to a location with ID of one, and that's gonna update that location in the database. If we set this to null here, we can actually send this request with null, and it's gonna nullify that location in the database. Now we could do a lot more with this API. For example, if we go back to the devices list page, we could add query parameters to the URL to allow searching and lookups to be performed. We could also add user authentication. We could refactor our views to use services and so on. We're not gonna do that. We are gonna finish with one very small example. We're gonna add cores to this project to allow cross-origin requests from a client-side application to our Django Ninja API. So in the next video, we're gonna create an application around this API that's gonna use React and Next.js. Now the new versions of Next.js, they have client components that allow you to send requests and fetch data from external APIs in response to user actions on the client. In order to do that, you need to activate cross-origin resource sharing. So what I'm gonna do is go to some documentation on a package called Django Cores Headers. So if you're planning to follow along with the next video, you need to make sure that you add this package. So we're gonna copy the pip install command, and I'm gonna paste this into the terminal here in order to install Django Cores Headers. And while that's installing, let's go back to the documentation. What you need to do here is add course headers to your installed apps. So let's start by doing that. If we go back to Django here and go to settings.py, we're going to add that to installed apps and then go back to the documentation. And the next thing we need to do is add cores middleware into the Django middleware setting. So let's go down to middleware and we're gonna add that just above the common middleware. Once we've done that, we can go back to the documentation and what we need to do as well as that is add one of the following settings. We can add cores allowed origins and that's gonna be set to a list of origins that are gonna be allowed to send these cross origin requests to Django. And as well as hard coding those origins, we can also provide patterns with regular expressions. And alternatively, if you want to allow requests from every single origin, you can set cores allow all origins to true. Now that's not the best for security reasons. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna reference cores allowed origins here. And we're gonna go back to settings.py and go to the bottom here. And I'm gonna paste that in here. And we're gonna set that to a list containing a single origin. So because we're going to build a React application in the next video that's gonna use our Django Ninja API, we're going to set that React application up to use localhost here, and it's gonna be port 3000. So that's the only external origin that's gonna be allowed to send requests to our Django application. We can save this and we can just test that we can run the server here just to make sure everything is working. And you can see that the server is running. If we go back to our API, we can still get all of these devices from the device list page. So everything is working fine and we're ready to go in the next video and build a React and Next.js application that's gonna consume this API and provide a user interface and display this data on the front end. And you can see how easy it is to define an API using Django Ninja. We just define a schema for our data and then we use those schemas within API endpoints, for example, to get all devices we just create the decorator and we pass the response equal to whatever schema we're expecting from that endpoint. And then we can just return Django query sets that are automatically gonna be converted to JSON under the hood using Django Ninja. And as well as query sets, of course, we can define endpoints for individual objects that contain dynamic parameters in the URL. And in that case, we can define our response to be an instance of the schema that we expect and just return a Django model instance. And again, automatically that's converted to JSON. And the schemas also, as we saw earlier, provide you automatic documentation, swagger documentation for your API. So it's all very useful. It's very easy to create APIs using Django Ninja, and you get all of the benefits of the type hinting and the modern Python features and validation of Pydantic, but that is available to you within the context of a Django application. So it marries the two approaches and it allows you to build these APIs very nicely indeed. So that's all for this video. If you've enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube and please subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. And if you're finding this content useful, please also consider giving a coffee to the channel. There's a link in the description. All of the code from this video will also be on GitHub. So you can check that out again in the description. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.